Uh, in this study, uh, very briefly, is a randomized placebo-controlled double-blinded trial uh, of patients uh, who have a newly diagnosed previously untreated multiple myeloma and are not candidates for a stem cell transplant. Uh, patients who are younger and healthier um, are generally offered a stem cell transplant as part of the treatment, and it's a highly effective form of treatment, as a matter of fact. But for patients who are older or sicker, they may not have that as an option. So this study was designed to look at those patients, and uh, what it consisted of was a, a treatment backbone uh, of lenalidomide dexamethasone, uh, and added to that was either ixazomib or, or a placebo. Uh, and again, patients and physicians were not aware of the treatment assignments that they received. Uh, and then these patients were treated uh, to uh, disease progression. Uh, the, one of the um, unusual features of this study compared to many of the studies which go on nowadays is that after about 18 months or cycle 19 of the, of the study, a patient's doses were reduced. So uh, for example, if you were in the exasmib arm, your exasmib dose was reduced by about 25% and your lenalidomide dose was reduced uh, from 25 milligrams to 10 milligrams, which is a substantial reduction. Uh, in the placebo arm, of course, your lenalidomide was reduced to 10 milligrams and dexamethasone was dropped from both arms. Uh, this was uh, something that was done uh, at the time the study was designed because the study uh, actually goes back to about 2012. And at that time, there was concern, uh, a newly diagnosed complication of lenalidomide therapy in multiple myeloma patients was that of uh, increased incidence of second cancers that would develop in these patients. Uh, and so uh, when we designed the study uh, in consultation with regulatory authorities, we were advised to have a dose reduction after a certain period of time uh, to perhaps mitigate that risk. So uh, this is one of the features of the study, which you might not see in a modern study today. The um, primary endpoint in this study was progression-free survival. Uh, the study was also powered for uh, testing a couple of critical subgroups, notably one was uh, patients with uh, expanded high-risk cytogenetics, and also a key secondary endpoint of the study was overall survival. So the, the progression-free survival, the primary endpoint, was found to be prolonged in uh, the patients who received exazomib by about 13 and a half months uh, from uh, 21.8 uh, months in the placebo arm to about 35.3 months in the exasmib arm. So actually it was rather um, impressively prolonged. However, the uh, uh, hazard ratio did not quite meet the boundary for statistical significance. So the p-value for this outcome was 0 0.07, uh, and the threshold for significance in the study would have to have been 0 0.04. So unfortunately, we cannot claim statistical significance for the primary endpoint, but nonetheless believe that this is actually a very important and meaningful uh, clinical improvement uh, that physicians and patients should be made aware of. So currently, uh, we, have, we have great need for all oral therapies, particularly in the environment we're living in now. Uh, but also uh, remember that this is a, an elderly population and trips to the physician in the hospital for intravenous or subcutaneous medications. Uh, these are a burden on patients, uh, particularly elderly patients or patients who have to travel long distances. Uh, and so an all oral treatment option potentially allows uh, physicians to treat their patients and patients uh, to stay at home uh, much longer uh, and uh, have a perhaps a, a reduced burden on the healthcare system at the same time. Uh, and just to point out that the ixazomib or Nilaro is the only uh, proteasome inhibitor which is currently available, which is an oral proteasome inhibitor. And proteasome inhibitors are one of the backbones of modern multiple myeloma therapy. So uh, if, if one has an all oral combination that is effective and provides a treatment benefit for the patient, then this could be uh, a, a valuable option 
for physicians and patients in, in situations where those considerations may be made in terms of the frequency of visits, distance to travel, uh, environmental considerations, and treatment burden. Thank you.